Welcome to the two buck chuck of luxury cars. That is obviously a Lexus. You'd be probably struggling to figure out which one it is, but you'll know what it is right away. Back here, oh yes, it is an ES. Unfortunately, it's a 250, but it is all-wheel drive. So this is the first all-wheel drive ES to hit the US. And the unfortunate part is that it is a two and a half cil two and a half liter four-cylinder. It feels like a two and a half cylinder actually. Um, the reason why I mentioned two buck chuck is because, as we all know, two buck chuck is cheap wine, and it's everywhere. And just like this car, you'll be seeing a lot of it, especially if you're behind one, because it will always be in your way. It is that slow. I do know that the interior is semi-luxurious. Large back seat space here, huge back door. It's kind of oddly long in the back compared to the front. This is the ultra luxe version, so it has a lot of brown. And, uh, well, let me get in. Okay, so, first thing you need about the first thing you need to know about this car is, uh, well, I'm not that impressed with it because we have an 1800 watt Mark Levinson stereo, which sounds like a clock radio coming from the dash. And it doesn't have a panoramic sunroof like the Camry does. Although this is very similar to a Toyota Camry. I actually prefer the interior of the Camry more. So let me start this thing up. Let me get my seatbelt on. Give me one second. Okay. Well, here we are in a 203 horsepower, four cylinder, two and a half liter, naturally aspirated Lexus. And I will get to the price in one second. I just want to show you how odd this car is. See, it has an eight speed automatic, but it can never find the right gear. So it's constantly hunting around. And the engine sounds terrible. So the whole time you're driving, all you hear is and I'm not a fan of that. All right, we'll go ahead and get on the freeway and turn around. Unleash the 203 horsepower of this weird car. See, you'll notice all-wheel drive makes sense when you have power. So if you have a Mercedes C-Class or an Audi A4, you'd have 255 to 261 horsepower over the paltry 203 this thing comes with. Floored. So I got torque steer. I don't know if the power actually went to the rear wheels, but you're expecting it because it does say all-wheel drive, but there's not enough power to actually utilize or benefit all-wheel drive. Granted, today it's a little drizzly out, so it's kind of wet. You'd figure we'd be able to take advantage of it, but without the power, we're not using it. So, as compared to other luxury cars that have all-wheel drive, oh god, that's a dismal, abysmal, dismal and abysmal at the same time, a dismal. Without the power, you're not taking advantage of that all-wheel drive system it's it it seems like it's only useful if you are off-road and no one's going to off-road an es because obviously it's not an suv and it's not snowing because i'm in texas at least it's not snowing this week uh, i do have power and water this week um, but basically you're looking at in an, an expensive alternative to something that's better which would be the Audi A4, the Mercedes C-Class, even the Toyota Camry is better than this. And that's just what bothers me about this car, is 
it is the two buck chuck of cars because you should be drinking water, but you really want, uh, I don't know, Merlot or Chardonnay. And instead of, you know, that's floored. Oh my God. I could do this whole car review by the time it gets to 60, I think. Anyway, you, you could just get one bottle of two buck chuck, but because it's so cheap, you just, you indulge and you get more than one bottle. And that's kind of like the luxury aspect here of this Lexus. It's like, no, you should have a Camry and you don't need all wheel drive, but it's a pretty affordable luxury car. So you're just going to get the ES250 all wheel drive and you're going to quote unquote save money just as it would if you bought the cheaper wine. And that's my problem with this car because some people may cite fuel efficiency, but I don't believe it's fuel efficient because the whole time I'm flooring the car and the whole time all you hear is the engine. So it's not that much of a luxury car. The rest of the car though is actually great. The uh, navigation system's kind of outdated. We have the touch screen, I mean, sorry, non-touch screen, but we have the touch pad. And with the touch pad, at least you don't have to go into it to turn on your heated seats because look, we have hard buttons for heated seats. And we even have a button for the rear sunshade, which we don't need today. So although this car doesn't have the same feature set and luxury items as the Camry, what it does have that sets it apart from every car on the road is the suspension. So if we put this in drive and we hit the road, wow, this is, this is going to be a great car for an Uber driver one day. Can't get out of its own way though. So when you drive along the road here, what you notice is you don't feel the road. It has a very similar setup in the suspension to the much more expensive Lexus LS. And so when you drive along and you basically get over rough roads, you won't feel it. Let's go ahead and go straight. It's clear. So in Dallas, for instance, you don't have this really rough ride. What you have instead is a ride where you can smoothly go through and, and drive over potholes and expansion joints, and you won't be that bothered by it. So for, for what it provides in, in ride quality, it kind of makes up for in the all-wheel drive system not really being all-wheel drive and the four-cylinder actually not being very very nice to listen to because in the end if you're commuting in this from your house to your job which is probably I don't know you're probably a teacher or someone who feels like a Lexus is what you need at this point um, I would say you're better off getting the Camry because the interior of the Camry offers better features for someone who is basically a road warrior or likes to get things done on their commute. Looking around in here, we have one cup holder up there, a square cup holder back here, and a slot there for your phone, but you can also put your phone in here, and then you can also put your phone here on the wireless charger. So there are some options in this car, but yeah, I, I think everything in here feels um, like an afterthought, especially this engine. And that's not a bad thing, because if you got the V6 version of this car, you'd be driving around with a 300 horsepower, give or take 301 horsepower V6, and it would be a much more sportier, much more... Uh, luxurious feel than what you get here in this pokey four-cylinder and there's nothing else I can explain other than um, when you want to look at the ES250 just keep looking because it's going on the freeway I think I can count 
to 80 faster than it can get to 80. That would be an interesting challenge for somebody. I just think that the ES is made for Uber drivers and they somehow got scammed by their focus group testing into making a car like this that isn't very good at anything other than decent ride quality, but it has a back seat that is too large to actually make this car uh, a luxury sedan because it's just, it's disproportionate. And it has some features, you know, the leather stitch dash and uh, heated and ventilated seats, but you can get that on any car these days. Um, this even has fake wood trim, looks fake at least, might be real, I'm not too sure, but it, it's very odd to find wood trim in a car these days. So just basically, in the end, the S250 is very uninspiring and very um, dated, which is weird because they just updated it in like 2019. And I feel like they could have done so much better um, instead of making it this boring. But that's the important part because Toyota has, which owns Lexus, Toyota has made a, an effort to say we will no longer produce boring cars. And hopefully that vision comes to light because this car, uh, beyond the seats that feel like you're at the exam table of a doctor's office um, and the stereo that sounds like an, a clock radio uh, coming from behind the screen there. This car is definitely um, the well, it's not the worst Lexus I've ever driven, but it's the second worst. Oh, I gotta go guys. Call coming in. And I know you're probably wondering, you never got to the price. Well, you're right. Here it is. The two and a half cylinder, <laughs> four cylinder, two and a half liter, two and three horsepower, all wheel drive, blah, blah, blah. It's supposed to get 34 on the highway. I did not get that. 54 grand. You gotta be kidding me. This is like, what is the point? What is the point of this car when you can have a much better Camry with more features? Uh, this car just doesn't do it for me. So, yeah, I think you're better off getting a Camry. And if you're going to spend this much money, you better just get the uh, C-Class or the A4. And uh, you'll be much happier. Trust me. Unless you're an Uber driver.